Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Greek ebook before it's gone. Most people who learn a foreign language learn it so that they can one day have real life conversations with native speakers. When you start out learning and crack open your first textbook or listen to your first podcast, having a real conversation can feel like a fantasy. When everything about a language feels new, it can be overwhelming. But this couldn't be further from the truth. While it does take a significant amount of time and effort to become fluent, having a conversation might not be as far off as you think. In this video, we'll look at three ways you can boost your conversational skills and start talking to native speakers. Number one, find native speakers and practice with them. It's unlikely you live near a big group of native speakers to practice with. If you happen to be in a major or international city, your chances may be better. Check and see if your city has a general language exchange. Chances are there could be a native speaker there who is also trying to learn another language. Practicing in person with a native speaker is probably the most interesting option for honing your speaking skills. But if you can't find anyone where you live, the next best option is to look online. Luckily for language learners, the past 10 years or so have seen an explosion in online language exchange sites. On these websites, you can search for someone who is a native speaker of your target language and is also learning your native language. The idea behind a language exchange is that you communicate with them via video or text chat, and half of the time, they help you practice your target language, and for the other half, you help them practice theirs. Practicing via an online language exchange is a highly effective way to practice your conversational skills. Number two, work on pronunciation. Pronunciation is often an overlooked skill when it comes to learning a foreign language. Most people think of a good foreign accent as a luxury rather than a necessity. But what most people don't talk about is how having a good accent boosts your listening and comprehension skills. If you can hear a sound from a foreign language and know how to make it yourself, then you're more likely to understand native speakers when they talk at normal speed, and you're also more likely to remember any new words or phrases you come across. Having a good accent means that the language no longer sounds foreign. Instead, it sounds familiar, maybe even natural. So how do you go about perfecting your accent? The best way is to break down the language into its individual sounds. Make note of any sounds that are the same or similar to your native language and of those that are different. Of the sounds that are different, spend your time practicing the ones that you find the hardest to say correctly. After you're comfortable with the individual sounds, you can start linking together words and phrases. This is where accent practice starts to get really fun and interesting. Get your hands on some native speaker audio from a TV show, song, or podcast. Play the audio back and listen closely a few times. Take note of how words blend together in speech. Then, do your best to imitate what you hear, trying to match the speaker's emphasis and intonation. Our language learning program's playback feature is perfect for this. Record yourself and compare it to the original recording. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable with the audio selection, and then move on to something more difficult. This is how you can break through the accent barrier and really start to make the language your own. Number three, learn phrases, not just individual words. Learning grammar and in individual words is great, but it's not the only approach you should take if you want to speak fluently. In addition to your regular grammar and vocabulary, try learning whole phrases, even if you aren't totally sure how they work grammatically. Learn phrases that are specific to your needs. It's a good idea to learn phrases that are grouped around a certain setting or subject, such as simple greetings or introductions, questions for getting to know someone, or traveling comfortably. You can even learn filler phrases, which you can use so that you have something to say when, well, you don't know what to say. Learning phrases like this will help you become conversational faster. You may not understand what you're saying literally, but as long as you know the general meaning behind the phrase and know when to use it, you'll be able to talk like a native. Eventually, your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary should catch up with the phrases you know. Learning a new language should feel like an adventure. There will be plateaus and periods in your learning where it feels like you're hitting a wall, but being able to speak with native speakers and have real conversations will help you combat language fatigue. After all, talking to someone face-to-face -face in a foreign language is one of the main reasons we start learning in the first place. 
And for even more ways to gain conversation skills, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Yeah. Hello. Number one. Yeah. 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 Hello. Kalimera. Good morning. Number two. Kalimera. 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 Good morning. Greece. <laughs> Kalispera. Good afternoon. Kalispera. 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 Good afternoon. Good morning is from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. From 12 until the sunset is Kalispera. And from the sunset and after, it's Kalinichta. But you are not saying to someone good night when you meet him. You tell him when you are leaving. Okay? Easy or confusing? Kalo vradi. Have a good evening. Kalo vradi. Kalo vradi. Have a good evening. Or have a good night. Poselene. What's your name? Poselene. What's your name? Poselene. Poselene. Yes, you in the corner. What's your name? Melene. I'm... Melene. Melene. I am. I'm... And your name? Melene Emanuel. I'm Emanuel. Melene Emanuel. Emmanuel, in Greek edition, Emmanuel. In Latin edition or in worldwide edition, Emmanuel. This is how they know me. Hero Poli. Nice to meet you. Hero Poli. Hero Poli. Hero Poli. Hero Poli. Nice to meet you. Tikanis. How are you? Tikanis. 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 How are you? How are you? Easy. Είμαι καλά. Ευχαριστώ. Και εσύ? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Είμαι καλά, ευχαριστώ. Και εσύ? Είμαι καλά, ευχαριστώ. Και εσύ? Είμαι καλά, ευχαριστώ. Και εσύ? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Παρακαλώ. Please. Παρακαλώ. 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 Please. Now, παρακαλώ, it has two ways of using it. Παρακαλώ, please do this for me. Θα μου δώσεις το αμάξι παρακαλώ. Θα μου δώσεις το αμάξι παρακαλώ. Can you give me the car please? Or, you welcome that you put it as παρακαλώ. It's okay, it's nothing. Ευχαριστώ. Thank you. Ευχαριστώ. Thank you. Ευχαριστώ. 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 Thank you. Ναι. Yes. Ναι. 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 Yes. You will give me the car. <laughs> Όχι. No. Όχι. 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 No. Usually you hear it from people that they are in bad mood. Usually they say yes, don't worry. Especially when you are in uh, summer holidays in Greece. Ίσως. Maybe. Ίσως. 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 Maybe. Εντάξει. All right. Εντάξει. Εντάξει. All right. Okay. We'll do it. Εντάξει. Με συγχωρείτε. Excuse me. Με συγχωρείτε. Με συγχωρείτε. Excuse me. Με συγχωρείτε. Συγγνώμη. I'm sorry. Συγγνώμη. 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 I'm sorry. Τι ώρα είναι. 
What time is it? Τι ώρα είναι? Τι ώρα είναι? What time is it? Πού είναι η τουαλέτα? Where is the restroom? These phrases are must. You have to learn them. Πού είναι η τουαλέτα? Πού είναι η τουαλέτα? Πού είναι η τουαλέτα? Where is the restroom? Μισό λεπτό. Wait a moment. Μισό λεπτό. Μισό λεπτό. Μισό λεπτό. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. Πόσο κάνει αυτό? How much is this? Πόσο κάνει αυτό? Πόσο κάνει αυτό? How much is this? Μπορώ να έχω το λογαριασμό παρακαλώ. Could I get the check please? Μπορώ να έχω το λογαριασμό παρακαλώ. Μπορώ να έχω το λογαριασμό παρακαλώ. Could I get the check please? Could I get the check please? Συχαρητήρια. Congratulations. Συχαρητήρια. 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 Congratulations. Τα λέμε αργότερα. See you later. Τα λέμε αργότερα. Τα λέμε αργότερα. Τα λέμε αργότερα. See you later. Alligator. <laughs> Αντίο. Goodbye. Αντίο. 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 Goodbye. Γεια. Yeah, λέγομαι Χρυσή. Χαίρο πολύ. Hi, I'm Chrissy. Pleased to meet you. In this series, we are going to learn basic Greek expressions. It is super easy and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Greek. There are only two sentences you need to do it. But first, it is important to clarify that in Greek, there is a difference between formal and informal language. Let's first see how Greek people introduce themselves in an informal situation. Ya, lego me Chrissy. Hiero poli. Hi, I'm Chrissy. Pleased to meet you. Ya, lego me Chrissy. Hiero poli. Start by saying ya, lego me, then say your name. Ya, lego me Chrissy. Finally, say hiero poli. Ya, lego me Chrissy. Χαίρο πολύ. And now let's see the same sentence in formal speech. Χαίρετε. Λέγομαι Χρυσή Παπαδοπούλου. Χαίρο πολύ για τη γνωριμία. Hello. My name is Χρυσή Παπαδοπούλου. Please to make your acquaintance. Χαίρετε. Λέγομαι Χρυσή Παπαδοπούλου. Χαίρο πολύ για τη γνωριμία. So what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at this together. Ya has been substituted with the formal greeting χαίρετε, Greek for rejoice. Λέγομαι Χρυσή has not been changed. Λέγομαι stands in both cases for my name is. However, during a formal self-introduction, we also say our last name. So I said Χρυσή Παπαδοπούλου. Here, you would say your full name. Finally, There is one more change to the ending. We added the words για τη γνωριμία to the phrase χαίρο πολύ. In informal cases, we can just say χαίρο πολύ, literally, I'm happy or pleased. But in formal cases, it's good to add για τη γνωριμία, which is Greek for the acquaintance, or in this case, your acquaintance. One more time, the informal way to introduce yourself in Greek is για yeah, Λέγομαι Χρυσή. Χαίρο πολύ. The formal way to introduce yourself is χαίρετε. Λέγομαι Χρυσή Παπαδοπούλου. Χαίρο πολύ για τη γνωριμία. Now it's time for Chris's insights. Greek people usually shake hands when they meet someone. Sometimes extremely vigorously. So accompany your introduction with your best firm handshake. And if you're not sure if you have to use a formal or the informal greeting, The informal greeting, χαίρο πολύ, is not considered rude. It is acceptable and used widely even in formal situations. Γεια σας! Είμαι η Στεφανία. 
Η πρωτοχρονιά είναι η πρώτη μέρα του χρόνου και στην Ελλάδα γιορτάζεται την 1η Ιανουαρίου, την ημέρα του Αγίου Βασιλείου. Είναι μια σπουδαία ευκαιρία για μικρού και μεγάλου να ανταλλάξουν δώρα αλλά και να γιορτάσουν όλοι μαζί την αλλαγή του χρόνου. Συνήθω με πολύ γλέντι, μουσική και άφθονο φαγητό και ποτό. Σε αυτό το βίντεο θα μάθετε πώ ακριβώ οι Έλληνε γιορτάζουν την πρωτοχρονιά. Γνωρίζετε σε τι θα μπορούσε να είναι χρήσιμο ένα ρόδι την πρωτοχρονιά? Θα σας δείξουμε την απάντηση στο τέλος αυτού του βίντεο. Ο εορτασμός της πρωτοχρονιάς ξεκινά από την προηγούμενη μέρα, με τις οικογένειες να προετοιμάζονται πυροτοδός για το ρεβεγιόν. Το πρωί, πολλά παιδιά πηγαίνουν από πόρτα σε πόρτα τραγουδώντας τα κάλατα της πρωτοχρονιάς με αντίτυπο ένα μικρό χαρτζηλίκι. Οι γυναίκες, εκτός από το μαγείρεμα και την προετοιμασία του τραπεζιού, δίνουν ιδιαίτερη προσοχή στην εμφάνισή τους, καθώς πρόκειται για το πάρτι της χρονιάς και θέλουν φυσικά να λάμπουν. Το μενού περιλαμβάνει κυρίως κρεατικά, αλλά και πολλά παραδοσιακά γλυκά, όπως κουραμπιέδες, μελομακάρονα και φυσικά τη διάσημη βασιλόπιτα. Καθώς το τέλος του χρόνου πλησιάζει, όσοι γιορτάζουν στα σπίτια τους, ανοίγουν την τηλεόραση και παρακολουθούν την αντίστροφη μέτρηση. Με την αλλαγή του χρόνου, όλοι αγκαλιάζονται και φιλούνται δίνοντα ευχέ. Πολλοί ανοίγουν και μια σαμπάνια για το καλορίζικο. Έπειτα, ο νοικοκύρη κόβει τη βασιλόπιτα, αφού τη σταυρώσει τρει φορέ με το μαχαίρι. Το πρώτο κομμάτι είναι του Χριστού, το δεύτερο τη Παναγία, το τρίτο του Αγίου Βασιλείου και ακολουθούν τα κομμάτια των υπολείπων μελών τη οικογένεια. Έπειτα, ακολουθεί γλέντι και χαρτοπεξία. Το πρωί τη πρωτοχρονιά, ανήμερα του Αγίου Βασιλείου, ο Άγιο Βασίλη φέρνει δώρα στα παιδιά, ενώ οι μεγάλοι ξεκουράζονται από την χθεσινοβραδινή κρεπάλη. Το πρώτο έθιμο είναι το ποδαρικό. Πρόκειται για την πρώτη είσοδο ή επίσκεψη στο σπίτι. Οι οικογένειε φροντίζουν να δέχονται το ποδαρικό από έναν καλότυχο και καλό καρδοσυγγενή ή από το μικρότερό του παιδί, επειδή τα παιδιά είναι αγνά και άδωλα. Κατά την είσοδο στο σπίτι, πρέπει το άτομο αυτό να μπει με το δεξί πόδι για να έρθουν όλα δεξιά, δηλαδή με τύχη. Η βασιλόπιτα δεν είναι μια οποιαδήποτε πίτα. Μέσα της κρύβεται ένα τυχερό φλουρί. Με το που λάβει ο καθένα το κομμάτι του, ξεκινάει η έρευνα. Όποιο βρει το τυχερό φλουρί, θα έχει τύχη για το υπόλοιπο της χρονιάς. Και τώρα θα σας δείξω την απάντηση του προηγούμενου quiz. Γνωρίζετε σε τι θα μπορούσε να είναι χρήσιμο ένα ρόδι την πρωτοχρονιά? Το ρόδι είναι σύμβολο αυθονίας, γονιμότητας και καλής τύχης. Σε πολλά μέρη της Ελλάδας, μετά την αλλαγή του χρόνου, πετάμε με δύναμη ένα ρόδι έξω από το κατόφλι της εξόπορτας, σπάζοντάς το σε πολλά κομμάτια. Έτσι, φέρνουμε καλοτυχία και αυθονία αγαθών στο σπιτικό μας. Πώς σας φάνηκε το μάθημα αυτό? Μάθατε τίποτα ενδιαφέρον? Ποια είναι τα έθιμα της πρωτοχρονιά στη δική σας χώρα? Αφήστε μας τα σχόλιά σας στο GreekPod101.com και τα λέμε στο επόμενο μάθημα. Γεια χαρά! Γεια σας! Είμαι η Στεφανία. Φανταστείτε... Μελωδίες γιορτινές, κάλαντα, εσπέσια αρώματα, ζεστή οικογενειακή ατμόσφαιρα, λαπιόνια και γιορτινή διακόσμηση στους δρόμους και στα σπίτια. Τα Χριστούγεννα είναι από τις πιο αγαπημένες γιορτές στην Ελλάδα. Γιορτάζονται στις 25 Δεκεμβρίου προς τιμή της γέννησης του Ιησού Χριστού. Και κάθε περιοχή έχει αυτές τις μέρες τα δικά της ξεχωριστά έθιμα. Σε αυτό το βίντεο θα δούμε μερικά από τα πιο γνωστά έθιμα που παρατηρούνται την περίοδο των Χριστουγέννων. Γνωρίζετε ποια είναι η κύρια διαφορά των Χριστουγέννων στην Ελλάδα με τα Χριστούγεννα στον υπόλοιπο δυτικό κόσμο? Θα σας δείξουμε την απάντηση στο τέλος αυτού του βίντεο. Η ατμόσφαιρα των Χριστουγέννων ξεκινά νωρίς, γύρω στις αρχές Δεκεμβρίου, με μαγαζιά και δρόμους να στολίζονται Χριστουγεννιάτικα. Τα Χριστουγεννιάτικα δέντρα, είτε ψεύτικα είτε αληθινά έλατα, έχουν την τιμητική τους. Πολλοί όμως, συνήθως οι νησιώτες, αντί να στολίζουν δέντρο, που είναι μια ξενόφερτη συνήθεια, στολίζουν το χριστουγεννιάτικο καράβι, που αποτελεί μέρο τη ελληνική παράδοση. Η συνήθεια αυτή έχει σχέση με την ανασχόληση των Ελλήνων με τη θάλασσα. Από τον στολισμό δεν θα μπορούσε να λείπει και η φάτνη, 
που αποτελεί την αναπαράσταση του στάβλου όπου γεννήθηκε ο Χριστό. Την παραμονή των Χριστουγέννων, από νωρί το πρωί, τα παιδιά ξεχύνονται στου δρόμου για να πούν τα Χριστουγεννιάτικα κάλαντα, ενώ οι μεγάλοι ετοιμάζονται για το ρεβεγιόν που θα ακολουθήσει αργότερα το βράδυ. Οι νοικοκυρέ ζυμώνουν το Χριστόψωμο και ετοιμάζουν το τραπέζι. Το χοιρινό είναι το πιο δημοφιλέ έδεσμα εκείνη τη βραδιά, όπω επίση και οι κουραμπιέδε και τα μερομακάρονα. Τα τελευταία χρόνια όμω, πολλοί επιλέγουν γαλοπούλα. Κατά το δείπνο, ακούγονται συνήθω οι ήχοι γνωστών Χριστουγεννιάτικων μελωδιών, κάπω έτσι ολοκληρώνεται η εικόνα τη οικογενειακή ταλπορή. Ένα καθαρά χριστιανικό έθιμο είναι και το Χριστόψωμο, το οποίο κόβεται ανήμερα την ημέρα των Χριστουγέννων, δίνοντα συγχρόνω πολλέ ευχέ. Το Χριστόψωμο φτιάχνεται από υλικά όπω ψιλοκοσκινισμένο αλεύρι, ροδόνερο, μέλι, σουσάμι, κανέλα και γαρίφαλα. Στο ζυμάρι προσθέτουν και ένα σταυρό με λωρίδες από τη ζύμη, ενώ στο κέντρο βάζουν ένα καρύδι με το τσόφλι του, συμβολίζοντα έτσι τη γονιμότητα. Άλλα δημοφιλή χριστουγεννιάτικα έθιμα είναι το τάισμα τη βρύση, κυρίω στην υπηρετική Ελλάδα, αλλά και το διαρκέ άναμα φωτιά για προστασία από του καλικάτζαρου. Οι καλικάτζαροι, σύμφωνα με τη λαϊκή δοξασία, είναι δαιμόνια που μένουν στα έγκατα τη γη. Την παραμονή των Χριστουγέννων βγαίνουν στην επιφάνεια για να πειράξουν του ανθρώπου, διότι του αρέσουν τα παιχνίδια και παραμένουν μέχρι την ημέρα των Θεοφανίων. Και τώρα θα σα δείξω την απάντηση του προηγούμενου quiz. Γνωρίζετε ποια είναι η κύρια διαφορά των Χριστουγέννων στην Ελλάδα με τα Χριστούγεννα στον υπόλοιπο δυτικό κόσμο. Στην Ελλάδα, ο Άγιο Βασίλη δεν έρχεται τα Χριστούγεννα όπω τον υπόλοιπο δυτικό κόσμο, αλλά την Πρωτοχρονιά, επειδή είναι η μέρα του Αγίου Βασιλείου. Παρ' όλα αυτά, οι νονοί και οι συγγενεί δίνουν δώρα στα παιδιά τα Χριστούγεννα, οπότε δεν μένουν παραπονεμένα. Πώ σα φάνηκε το μάθημα αυτό, Μάθατε τίποτα ενδιαφέρον, Γιορτάζονται τα Χριστούγεννα στην χώρα σα, Και αν ναι, πώ, Αφήστε μα τα σχόλιά σα στο GreekPod101.com και τα λέμε στο επόμενο μάθημα. Γεια χαρά! Γεια σα! Είμαι η Στεφανία. Τα Θεοφάνια ή αλλιώ τα Φώτα είναι μια χριστιανική εορτή που γιορτάζεται κάθε χρόνο στι 6 Ιανουαρίου, ει ανάμνηση τη βάπτιση του Ιησού Χριστού από τον Άγιο Ιωάννη τον Βαπτιστή στον Ιορδάνη Ποταμό. Είναι η τρίτη και η τελευταία εορτή του 12 ημέρου, τη περίοδου δηλαδή από τα Χριστούγεννα ω τα Θεοφάνια. Λέγεται 12 ημέρο επειδή διαρκεί 12 ημέρε. Σε αυτό το βίντεο θα μάθετε πώ ακριβώ γιορτάζονται τα Θεοφάνια στην Ελλάδα. Η σύνθετη λέξη θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από δύο λέξει. Μήπω γνωρίζετε ποιε είναι αυτέ, θα σα δείξουμε την απάντηση στο τέλο αυτού του βίντεο. Σύμφωνα με τι γραφέ, κάποια ημέρα ο Ισού παρουσιάστηκε στον Ιωάννη τον Βαπτιστή, που κήρυτα και βάπτιζε στον Ιορδάνη ποταμό, ζητώντα του να βαπτιστεί. Κατά τη στιγμή τη βάπτιση, κατέβηκε από τον ουρανό το άγιο πνεύμα, υπομορφή περιστερά. Στάθηκε πάνω από τον Ιησού, ενώ ταυτόχρονα ακούστηκε η φωνή του Θεού από τον ουρανό. Φανερώθηκε έτσι στη γη η Αγία Τριάδα. Πάνω σε αυτό το γεγονός καθιερώθηκε από την Εκκλησία το μυστήριο του βαπτίσματος με την χρήση νερού. Την ημέρα των Θεοφανίων, στις παραθαλάσσιες περιοχές της Ελλάδας, τελείται το έθιμο του αγιασμού των υδάτων, κάτι που θυμίζει την βάπτιση του Ιησού. Κατά την τελετή, που λέγεται και απλά αγιασμό, καθαγιάζονται τα ύδατα με ευχέ και επικλήσει του ιερέα, καθώ και με την εμβάπτιση του τιμίου σταυρού στα νερά. Σε περιοχέ μη παραθαλάσσιε, η τελετή μπορεί να γίνει σε ποτάμι, λίμνη ή και σε δεξαμενή νερού. Αγιασμοί τελούνται επίση σε σπίτια, όπου ο ιερέα, με ένα κλαδί βασιλικού, ραντίζει το σπίτι με το αγιασμένο νερό. Κατά την εμβάπτιση του τιμίου σταυρού σε θάλασσα, ποτάμι, λίμνη ή δεξαμενή. Τολμηροί κολυμβητέ ή αλλιώ βουτυχτάδε βουτούν στα παγωμένα νερά για να τον ανασύρουν. Όποιο πιάσει τον σταυρό, αφού πρώτα τον φυλίσει, τον περιφέρει στι οικίε και λαμβάνει πλούσια δώρα. Στην ελληνική ταινία Μανταλένα, που γυρίστηκε στην Αντίπαρο το 1960, γίνεται μια χαρακτηριστική απόδοση του εθίμου αυτού, αν και ο λίγων κομικοτραγική. Άλλα έθιμα των Θεοφανίων είναι τα κάλαντα των φώτων, που λένε τα παιδιά την παραμονή τη εορτή και το πλήσιμο των εικόνων.
Θυμάστε τους καλικάτζαρους, τους δαίμονες που ανεβαίνουν στη γη την παραμονή των Χριστουγέννων. Με τους αγιασμούς των θεοφανίων φοβούνται, τρέπονται σε φυγή και επιστρέφουν ξανά στην υπόγεια κρυψώνα τους, όπου και παραμένουν μέχρι την επόμενη παραμονή Χριστουγέννων. Και τώρα θα σας δείξω την απάντηση του προηγούμενου quiz. Η σύνθετη λέξη θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από δύο λέξεις. Μήπως γνωρίζετε ποιες είναι αυτές? Η λέξη θεοφάνεια αποτελείται από τη λέξη θεός και από το αρχαίο ρήμα φένο που σημαίνει φανερών. Η γιορτή ονομάζεται έτσι επειδή, όπως είδαμε, ο Θεός φανερώθηκε στη γη. Λέξεις όπως φαίνομε, φαινόμενο, φαντασία, φάντασμα, φανάρι παράγονται από το ρήμα φένο. Πώς σας φάνηκε το μάθημα αυτό? Μάθατε τίποτα ενδιαφέρον? Εσείς έχετε δει ποτέ ζωντανά ή σε βίντεο την τελετή αγιασμού των υδάτων? Αφήστε μας τα σχόλιά σας στο GreekCode101.com και τα λέμε στο επόμενο μάθημα. Γεια χαρά! In the last lesson, we learned how to be grateful to people by saying ευχαριστώ. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in Greece. Είστε έτοιμοι? Are you ready? Ξεκινάμε, so let's start. The most used informal greeting is ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Ya yeah means hi, hello or goodbye. We use it when we meet but also when we leave. We should only use this greeting with friends or relatives. If you want to be more formal, you need to pay attention to the time of day. The most common phrase is Kalimera. Kalimera. Literally, Kalimera means good day. However, we may also interpret it as good morning or good afternoon. As a rule of thumb, we can use Kalimera only during the daytime, from morning until early afternoon. During the late afternoon and evening, we say Kalispera. Kalispera. Espera or spera is ancient Greek for the part of the day after sunset. So Kalispera means good afternoon or good evening. Kalimera and Kalispera are used when we meet someone, but when we leave we don't say them again. In this formal situation, Greek people use adio. Adio. Adio means goodbye. If you're leaving after around 8 p.m., you can say Kalinichta, which literally means good night. Kalinichta. Finally, it is very common in Greek to use the informal hi we introduced in the beginning of this lesson as a parting greeting as well. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Now you can greet people in many different ways in Greek. Let's review them all again. When greeting in an informal situation, we say ya. Yeah. When greeting in a formal situation, we say kalimera or kalispera. When leaving in a formal situation, adio. When leaving in an informal situation, ya. Yeah. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Chris's insights. In formal situations, Greek people commonly greet each other by shaking hands. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we kiss each other on both cheeks. Don't be afraid to do it with your Greek friends. It's normal. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Greek. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you are asking it in Greek, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if their answer is no. Here is the informal way to say it. Milas aglika. Milas aglika. Milas is to speak and aglika is English. In Greek, verbs change depending on who the subject is. The word milas is conjugated from the verb milao which means to speak. By the ending S, we understand this is the second person singular. This is the informal way to say you speak. You will notice that the personal pronoun itself, the word you, is missing. This happens very often in Greek. Because the verb ending changes depending on the subject, 
you don't need to actually say the subject in order to be understood. To learn how to properly conjugate omega verbs like Milao, please look at our Absolute Beginner series on GreekPod101.com. You can find very detailed grammar lessons and resources there. We are now going to make the sentence formal. This is done by using the formal version of you, which is a sis. If we change the word for you, we will conjugate milao differently. It becomes milate. Everything else stays the same. Milate aglica. Milate aglica. Adding signomi, excuse me, the sentence becomes even more polite. Signomi, milate aglica. Signomi, milate aglica. The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Ne. Yes. Ne. Ligo. A little. Ligo. Ohi, then milao aglica. No, I don't speak English. Ohi, then milao aglica. Since this last one is a negative statement, we need to say then or the before the verb milao. Here you can also notice what we mentioned before. The personal pronoun ego, that is I, is not used since the ending of the verb shows that it is the first person. Now it's time for Chris's insights. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Greek people study other European languages, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute aglica with Italica for Italian, Rosica for Russian, Hispanica for Spanish, Germanica for German. In our last lesson, we learned how to use signomi, mesinchorite, and lipame when apologizing in Greek. In this lesson, we are going to learn something even more practical, how to count from 1 to 10 in Greek. And we'll learn them all in 3 minutes. Tria lepta. Are you ready? Let's start. Ena. E na. Dio. Di o. Tria. Tri a. Tessera. Te se ra. Pende. Pende. Exi. Exi. Epta. Epta. Octo. Octo. Enea. E ne a. Deca. The ka. Okay, now repeat after me. I'll say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Ena. Dio. Tria. Tessera. Pende. Exi. Epta. Octo. Enea, Veca. Great job! What is before Enna? Do you know? Yes, it's zero. In Greek, it's mi then. Mi then. So now, you can count pretty much anything and do other useful stuff like giving your friends your cell phone number and writing down theirs. Let's see how to do that in Greek. We'll use the phrase o arithmos mu ine, which means my number is. O arithmos mu ine. O arithmos mu ine. Exi. Enea. Epta. Octo. Pende. Tessera. Tria. Dio. Miden. Can you read it by yourself? Exi, enea, efta, octo, pende, tessera, tria, dio, miden. Okay? Great! Now it's time for Chris's insights. Like most words in Greek, numbers are gender sensitive. The numbers we learn today are used when counting neuter objects. The masculine and feminine numbers are almost the same 
but with slight differences for the numbers 1 through 4. We won't get into this for now since, with the neuter numbers, you can do most things. Even if you use the wrong gender, Greeks will understand you. In the last two lessons, we learned how to count in Greek from 1 to 100. I hope you spend some time practicing the numbers because they will come in handy in this lesson. Why? Because we will learn how to go shopping in Greece. Before we go, you need to know how to say how much is it. Poso kani? Poso kani? Are you ready to go shopping in Greece? Let's go! You see something you like and want to ask the shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say is Parakalo. Do you remember what that means? It means please, usually, but in this situation it means excuse me. Parakalo, poso kani afto? Parakalo, poso kani afto? The word afto we use in this phrase means it or this. We don't actually say the name of the object. If we want to be more specific, we must know if the object is feminine, masculine or neuter, convert the word afto accordingly and add the object itself. Let's say we are asking about a hat or a capello. In Greek, a hat is neuter, so we will use the phrase afto to capello. Let's try it. Paracalo, posso cani afto to capello? Excuse me. How much is this hat? Paracalo, poso cani afto to capello? And skirt is a feminine noun. Fusta. Let's try that too. Paracalo, posso cani afti fusta? Excuse me, how much is this skirt? Pa ra ka lo po so ka ni a fti i fusta Finally, let's also try a masculine noun like a lighter anaptiras para ka lo po so ka ni so anaptiras Excuse me, how much is this lighter? Pa ra ka lo Poso kani aftos o anaptiras? At this point, the shopkeeper will answer by saying the price like the kapende evro or ikosi evro. The word evro means, of course, euro, and as for the number, you already know that, don't you? In case you have forgotten, the kapende means 15 and ikosi means 20. Now it's time for Chris's insights. Even though it is not very polite, the fastest way to ask how much something costs is by saying the word afto, meaning it, and adding the word poso, meaning how much, like this, afto, poso. In this case, even though you're using the neuter it, afto, you can also use it with masculine and feminine nouns. If you don't know the object's gender, or you are in a hurry, you can do this. Greeks do it all the time. Hi everybody, my name is Chrissy. Welcome to the 2000 Core Greek Words and Phrases video series. Its lesson will help you learn new words, practice and review what you've learned. Okay, let's get started. First is... Molinsi Infection Molinsi Mo lin si. Infection. Dermatiki mo lin si. Skin infection. Dermatiki mo lin si. Grippy. Flu. Grippy. Gri. Flu. Epochi gripis. Flu season. Epochi gripis. 
trombeta. Trumpet. Trombeta. Trombeta. Trumpet. Mathimata trubetas. Trumpet lessons. Mathimata trubetas. Pilian ahorisis. Departure gate. Pilian ahorisis. Pili anachorisis. Departure gate. Pili anachorisis aradatria. Departure gate 43. Pili anachorisis aradatria. Kinoniologia. Sociology. Kinoniologia. Κοινωνιολογία Sociology Μελέτη της κοινωνιολογίας Study of Sociology Μελέτη της κοινωνιολογίας Αεροσυνοδός Flight Attendant Αεροσυνοδός Αεροσυνοδός Flight attendant Γυναίκα αεροσυνοδός Female flight attendant Γυναίκα αεροσυνοδός Θέση Seat Θέση Θε, σι. Σιτ. Αεροπορική θέση. Airplane seat. Αεροπορική θέση. Ιατρική. Medicine. Ιατρική. Ιατρική Medicine Πεδίο της ιατρικής Field of Medicine Πεδίο της ιατρικής Οικονομική θέση Economy Class Οικονομική θέση Οικονομική θέση. Economy class. Έκλεισα εισιτήριο στην οικονομική θέση. I booked an economy class ticket. Έκλεισα εισιτήριο στην οικονομική θέση. Τίση. Flight. Πτήση. Πτήση. Flight. Κάρτα επιβίβασης για την πτήση. Boarding pass for the flight. Κάρτα επιβίβασης για την πτήση. Let's review. Respond to the prompts by speaking aloud. First, you will hear a word or phrase in English. Respond in Greek, then repeat after me, focusing on pronunciation. Ready? Do you remember how to say infection? Molinsi. Molinsi. And how to say flu? Grippy. Grippy. What about trumpet? Trobeta. Trobeta. Do you remember how to say departure gate? Pilianahorisis. 
πύλη αναχώρηση. Let's try sociology. Κοινωνιολογία. Κοινωνιολογία. What about flight attendant? Αεροσυνοδός. Αεροσυνοδός. Now let's see if you remember how to say seat. Θέση. Θέση. Another one. What about medicine? Ιατρική. Ιατρική. Do you remember how to say economy class? Οικονομική θέση. Οικονομική θέση. And finally, do you remember how to say flight? Πτήση. Πτήση. Well done. See you next time. Adio. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances in vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? 
We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Greek ebook before it's gone.